All right, today's the last day I'm going to be working on this clay. I'm going to be uh, producing the uh, video that uh, shows how I did this sculpture. And uh, I'll be doing that over this coming week. Um, anyway, I'm going to work on the beard today. And uh, I'll come back when I have a bit of that done. I don't know how much I'm going to show. Well... I don't see why I can't show you that one. So let's get started and uh, see how far I get today. Time to play with some clay. What I'm doing right now is just filling underneath his uh, chin and filling out the uh, beard just a little bit. All right, what I've done is I've made lines across the uh, clay to give it, well, you know how, where you button your shirt, that part of the shirt uh, gets puckered up because it's more than one layer of... Uh, uh, cotton or uh, wool and uh, it just naturally puckers up and that's what I've done here I put a, a slight seam on the edge of the uh, shirts buttons or the button part of the shirt uh, this is the part that's going to be um, that opens up uh, female would be on this side males on this side for some reason don't ask me why. Now, I'm going to put some, let's see, I'm going to figure out how, where I'm going to put the buttons at. There's going to be, yeah, i got to get something I can do that with. There's going to be a button up here, one there. One there, and one there. So that's a four buttons. And I want to put something underneath this so that uh, I show a little bit of a strain on the button. Not strain, but yeah, I don't know how to explain it. You'll see what I'm talking about when I'm done. Just put a little clay underneath there to lift it up off the shirt. And the only place where the uh, thing comes down next to your shirt is where the button is. Let me do a small one there. I'm going to use the round bottom of this tool here to make the button. I just got to get the light down here where I can see what I'm doing. The first button goes right there. And what I do is I just press in with the uh, round end and it spreads the uh, little ball of clay out to be a shape of a button with even the rip lip around the edge now let's get that one of course this might be too big of a button so you see how 
that makes it look like a button now. The key is to make each of the little balls that you're going to flatten the same size, and that comes with feeling it in your fingers. I'm just going to take a little ball tool and make some holes in the uh, buttonhole or the button so that they got some place to sew it. And that's that. Now it's just a matter of blending the. Uh, wrinkles okay I'm going to take this uh, latex tool it's a got a real sharp point to it and it's round can't remember where I got this from but I'm sure you can get them online anyway I'm going to Add just little imperfections of the beard, not so evenly coiffed or trimmed. I don't want to overdo it, but. I have a goatee, and I know it. it's never perfectly coiffed. Although there are people who are rich enough to afford people to trim their goatees and their beards and their mustaches, I don't think he would do that on a daily basis. That would be the last, least of his worries, was how his beard was trimmed. I take a lot of assumption on things when I'm sculpting them, and it's because I'm making a story of somebody. I'm making their personality just sort of like a writer writing a chapter about somebody's looks or personality. And uh, that's all I'm doing is creating a story with clay. By the way, I'm just going to take about a week off because I'm planning out another piece and I've got to start doing some researching for that one. I've been asked to do something and I've got to uh, do some researching to prepare for it. All right, that's uh, going to be it on this piece. I'm going to put this aside, let it sit up on the shelf. Until something happens and I have to come and finalize it and all that stuff. But uh, for now, that's the Widow and the Widower. A uh, clay that I've really enjoyed creating and making an instructional video on how to create two figures together, two busts, and join them. And all that is involved in doing that, in planning, and planning, and using techniques that I've never used before in a couple of places that uh, you will profit from 
if you purchase this video. This will be uh, in uh, on Vimo this uh, coming week, maybe. I've just got to uh, find the time to sit down and work on the total video. All the combined, all the hours of uh, video that I've shot on this piece. What you've seen on YouTube is just a small fraction of what I've actually shot. But uh, today I finished it, and uh, I'm happy with it. I really am. I like the feel of it. I like the, like the softness and the feminine part of her, and the manliness and the softness of him as well. Um, they're both in need of each other's comfort, and uh, I hope I've portrayed that. My great-great-grandfather, uh, Alfred Harper, uh, came out west in 1847 on a wagon train. In fact, he had a beard like this. I don't know if he had it when he was crossing the plains, but he certainly had it uh, later on in his life. Um, he uh, was a wheelwright in Nauvoo, Illinois. He built a lot of the wagons that they came out west on and uh, are in. And uh, he settled the Salt Lake Valley and uh, in the Sugar House area of that valley. And in fact, he planted a pine tree. I think it's still there. Uh, I remember seeing it the last time I saw it was back in the 60s or 70s. And it was a monstrous big pine tree. And uh, he was plowing fields the day Brigham Young said, this is the place, drive on. And they took a desert that had one tree in the whole valley and made it into a beautiful, beautifully green, fertile land with farms and and rich timber and stuff like that the, that we have now there. You wouldn't even know that it was once a desert. But uh, through their hard work and their suffering, they made a home in a place where nobody else wanted to be. And on the edge of a lake that was uh, so salty you can actually sit in the water like you're sitting in a chair. I swear, I did that back in the 70s, and I'm telling you, it's it's an amazing feeling to sit in that water and just so buoyant because of all the salt in the water. It's what's left of a great lake that once covered the whole area, and it's uh, Lake Bonneville was the lake that covered the whole area, and Great Salt Lake is the last remnant of that great lake. All right, sorry about the history lesson, but I, I don't think it hurts to know a little bit about our history. It's a good, proud history we have, and uh, we should be all proud of where we came from and how we survived. All right, good night, everybody. I'll see you next time. Please give me a like and a subscribe, and ring the little bell. Also, don't forget I have instructional videos available now online. The link below this video shows you a link to a review of all nine videos. Later, everybody. Good night.